couldn't ask for better weather, the sun's shining. But you know, as the saying goes, it could be pouring down the rain, but that's okay. The sun is still shining. Amen. All right, we're going to we're going to start out here and do a couple of songs for you. How many is free this morning? Let's take his Yeah. 
joy to know that the Lord's taking good care of me. Isn't it you? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, this morning I want to look just for a few minutes over in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. The book of Isaiah in chapter 43. I'm going to start in the first verse there and I'm going to read just a couple. I hope it don't offend you if I take my jacket off. Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about there's no way around it. God will take you through it. Amen. Isn't that a good thing to know that there's no way around it. God will take you through it. And so, when you find your scriptures, if you'll shout Amen. All right, we've got a couple that's found them. I guess that's good enough. We'll start with that. All right. Uh, Isaiah chapter 43, we'll start in the first verse. And we'll read down verse 7. And then we're going to skip over to verses 10 and 11. And it says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable. And I have loved thee, therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Now verse 10, it says, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he, before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. So let's talk just a few minutes about there's no way around it, but God will take you through it. No way around it, God will take you through it. And of course, in this scripture I read here, it's uh, referencing the, the crossing of the Red Sea. And we go down through here and we read, Fear not, for I am with thee, over here in verse 5. Now, you can hear that verse again over in the book of John, chapter 14, when Jesus told them the exact same thing. And that's no surprise because He was the flesh. It, it, John started by writing, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It also says that the Word became flesh and dwelled among us. And over here in John 14, we'll start in verse 12. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And what does it say in verse 14? If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. But then what, what comes in the very next verse? If ye love me, keep my commandments. And then he goes on, and this is the chapter where he talks about the coming of a comforter, that he may be with you forever. And of course, it talks about the Spirit. It is the Spirit of truth, 
And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth, for God is a spirit. And that's how He must be worshipped. But getting back to this, uh, that was free. Getting back to this, uh, we're talking about the crossing of the Red Sea. Well, you know, I got to studying about that and reading about that in the book of Genesis. Um, it, the whole story, it doesn't start in Exodus. It doesn't start with uh, Moses being swept out of the bulrushes. But you go back to the book of Genesis, you've got to figure out why were they in Egypt? Well, there was a famine in the land. And Israel, also known as Jacob, what told his sons to go up and get, he said, I've heard there's corn in Israel or in Egypt. And so they went up there. So they went up there to be sustained. But why is that significant? Why is that significant? You go back a couple of chapters in the book of Genesis and God spoke to Joseph. And he gave him a dream. Joseph was a dreamer. And we, we know that through reading the Scripture. And he told them the dream about all the hay bales. There were all these hay bales. And everyone had a hay bale. His dad, his brethren, and him. And everyone gathered around his hay bale and bowed down to it. Well, that made their brothers just a little bit ticked off. Because here the baby of the family saying, Hey, you're going you're gonna to bow down to me. You're going to listen to what I have to say. Well, of course, there's always that sibling rivalry. And then, to add this on top of it, he was daddy's favorite. Daddy got him a coat of many colors. Why? Because Rachel was the one that he was after, and Joseph and Benjamin were the only two that Rachel bore him. And so, they were his, his pick, I guess you could say. So, all this goes on, they get jealous, and they, they hatch this plot, and they say, okay, there's a caravan, or no, before that, they say, let's kill him and tell him that the wolves got him. And they say, okay, and there, he had one brother said, well, no, 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 let's just throw him in a pit. You know, sometimes it's not good to be thrown in a pit. You look up and all you see, you look around you and you see darkness. And way up yonder you see a light. A pit's not a place where you want to be, but sometimes we wind up in them, don't we? But his brother said, let's save him alive. But the story they told their dad was he was dead. They killed an animal and got blood all over his coat and tore it and told him. But they had sold him into Egypt. Into slavery. But I wanted to look at something over here in the last chapter of Genesis. Uh, obviously, his brothers were a little nervous to find out that it came true. They went to, to Egypt for food, and guess who they had to get it from? The brother they put in a pit. And so, at this point in Genesis chapter 50, Jacob had died. And they were afraid, okay, now daddy's gone, He's not going to keep Joseph back from us anymore. He's, he's not our, our safety, you know, to keep him at bay. But what does Joseph say? He has a great attitude. In verse 24, he says, or excuse me, not verse 24, let's go back to verse 19. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God. Now, he was in captivity. I don't consider that a place of God. You look around and you're in a land of pilgrims and strangers and things could have went terrible wrong. But he said, am I in a place of God? And then, this is what he says in verse 20, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now, what's he talking about? He's talking about he had that dream about the coming famine. And God orchestrated this. Oh, wait a minute. That sounds familiar. Romans 8, 28. For we know that all things work together for good to them that are the called according to His purpose. 
Not just anybody, but those that are called according to His purpose. Now, the, the gospel is for whosoever. I'm a whosoever, you're a whosoever, all God's children are whosoever. And so that means that we have all been called unto salvation to God. And so all things will work together for good because He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And Jeremiah 29, 11, it's quoted a lot that uh, God is talking to him and He says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, not of evil, but of good, plans to prosper you and to give you an expected end. God's not caught by surprise, folks, by anything. Because He is omniscient, He knows all, He's omnipresent, He sees all. And none of this caught God by surprise. But let me tell you something. There's no way around it. God will take you through it. He'll deliver you from your situation whether you put yourself there or whether someone else put yourself there. Because what did I just read here? You meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good. Let's go on down to uh, chapter 50, verse 24. It says, And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die. And God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. <laughs> you know, we sing this song, This world is not my home, I'm just passing through. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about Abraham, how he admitted that he was just a pilgrim and a stranger traveling through who was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. But let's look at one last thing before we move to the next thought. In the book of Daniel, chapter 3, I apologize for not having the verses uh, written down, so I'm just going to have to flip back and forth. Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody knows this story. Well, what does that have to do with the children of Israel? Well, what does it say? It's a quoted verse in Isaiah 43, 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. What happened? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were taken into captivity. They did not want to be there. It was against their will, but they, that's where they wound up. But it's how they reacted in the situation that they were in. God honored that. Look at what it says in chapter 3, uh, verse 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. They were not being a smart aleck to him. They were saying, we're, we're not afraid to answer you because we're confident. We are confident in the answer we're giving you. And this is what they said. If it be so, they're leaving it to God's will, which I'll get to that in just a minute. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and He will deliver us out of thine own hand, O King. But if not, oh, oh goodness. We're not quick to say that. But if. We're quick to name it and claim it and grab, blab it and grab it and whatever they that phrase they use now. But they're leaving it in God's will. What does he say in verse 17? Or 18? But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So, they had a made up mind, and that is the most important thing you can have is to know who God is and have a made up mind that you're going to serve Him regardless of the situation, regardless of what it looks like. He is still God. He is still on His throne. He still knows the very hairs that are numbered on your head or the lack thereof. His calculator goes off every morning when I comb my hair, subtracting. But that's okay. 
But I said all this to say, let God lead the way. There's no way around it. God will take you through. Let God lead the way. He knows the best route. Amen. Sometimes we get in there and we say, oh God, I know much better than you. It would be, you know, we should go this way or do that or uh, how about we go around this way. And I, I know the reason he's not stressed out is because he watches us and we're just hilarious to him, I'm sure. Because we think we got this all figured out. And he's, he's saying, I see all. It's like children. Your children, you watch them, and they, they, I have a child, she's seven, and she knows all about the world. I told her, I said, you're just a young, and yet she said, I am seven years old, Daddy. I'm like, oh, excuse me. But listen to this. Let God lead the way. He knows the best route. And it, Exodus 13, verse 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go. Listen to this. God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. Why? You say, God... We're getting from point A to point B. Why are we having to go through all these stops in between? He has a reason. God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return back. You know, a lot of times we get in situations and God's trying to help us out. And we say, oh God, we'll just go the easy way. And then we go the easy way and we wind up right back where we started from. And God's sitting there waiting and He's just wanting to ask you, are you ready to try it my way now? I know what's best. I'm a loving Father. I am a caring Father. And I know what's best. They eventually do face the Philistines, but this was not their day to face Him. God knew they were not prepared. They were not ready. There was no David among them at the time. So it's in God's timing. He will lead you through. He knows what's best. Let's look at these next few verses. Uh, well, when you have opportunity, you can read all the way down. In verse 18, it says, God led the people about through the way of the wilderness... Oh, we hate going through the wilderness, don't we? The wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up out of the land of Egypt. And we go on down in chapter 14, verse 3. For Pharaoh will say, this is God telling Moses, Pharaoh will say to the, of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness hath shut them in. Isn't it funny? We look around. You know, in Psalm 23 it says, Thou preparest a table before me. Where is he prepared? In the presence of mine enemies. You know, your enemies may be looking back and you may be following the lead of God, but it does not look to the natural eye like it makes sense. Well, Jesus said, He uses the, the plain things to confound the wise. The world may look and say, well, they're just out there. They're getting all tangled up. They're messing up. You know, they're, they're turning this down, turning that down. They're not on a fast track. You know, they're not, you know, soaring to success and wealth. But we go back to that child's fable. Slow and steady wins the race. God is not looking for sprinters. What did Paul say? Run the race with patience that is set before us. He's looking for long distance runners. He's not looking for a sprinter that can use all their energy and then they're no good. He's not looking to see how fast we can make this trip to glory. He's looking to see how faithful we can make this trip to glory. But there's no way around it. God will take you through it. There at the Red Sea. You talk about between a rock and a hard place, that's where they were at. There were mountains on either side. There was a wilderness in between. 
Egypt was behind them and the Red Sea was in front of them. To the natural eye, they had nowhere to go. And Pharaoh says, Aha, I've got them where I want them. They are all entangled. They can't get free. You know, that's the way of the world. Sometimes we get, you know, they, we sing this song, Egypt was once my home, I was a slave. <coughs> but you know what? I'm living in Canaan now, amen? But I tell you, they, the world will look at us and say, Oh, if they were going to do good, they were going to do great. But look, they're all wandering around in here. They, they don't know where they're going. They're lost. They don't know what they're doing. But that's what the world says. God sees a victory on the horizon. The world thinks you're tangled up. But there's no way around it. God will take you through it. We sing a song a lot of times, the darkest hour is just before the dawn. And it's a fact. If you stay up, I don't suggest you do. But I've been up before and I've seen the sunrise. And the darkest period of night, it keeps getting darker and darker and darker and then the sun rises. Look down here in Exodus chapter 14. Over here in these verses, it says, starting in verse 11, that... Uh, they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Now what an amazing thought. The Lord will fight for you, and you're going to hold your peace. You know, a lot of people today, they'd rather be enslaved than to see salvation. They'd rather be with the familiar and then instead of taken to the unknown. I'm sure it would have been easier for Abraham to have stayed in Ur, but God gave him a promise and he went to seek in a city whose builder and maker was God. He confessed that he was nothing more than a stranger and a pilgrim here on this earth. And he pressed toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, as Paul would say. And a lot of people, these drug addicts, these alcoholics, and it don't have to be that. It could be anything. They'd rather be enslaved than to live a life of freedom in Christ because they're going to have to work a little bit. You know what? That's a shame because as hard as we work, there's a big victory coming. The harder the work, the sweeter the victory. And I tell you, let's, let's read over in 1 Peter chapter 4. A lot of people, they, they just want to stick their head in the sand when trials come their way and say, woe is me. But over here in 1 Peter chapter 4, listen to what he says. Starting in verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange things happen to you. What does he say? But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you, on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. But what is it that God said over here in Exodus 14 when he was talking to Moses? He, he said in verse 15, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto to the children of Israel that they go forth. And then we go on down. 
Verse 17, what does he say? I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. The world is looking at us. We may be the only Bible that some people read. But they're looking to see how faithful you stay. When they were persecuted in the Roman Empire, it was like throwing gas on a fire because they'd see these Christians standing up, unwavering, and they're like, if they are so steadfast in the midst of all this, they have bound to got a hold of something. They have got something that I want. It has got to be something supernatural that this world cannot satisfy, that this world cannot provide. And see these fiery trials, uh, Paul writes about it in his writings, that it's to bring, we will come forth as gold. How do you bring forth gold? When you see it in its natural state, it's pretty and yellow, but there's a lot of impurities. But when you work and you work and you try it by fire, all the impurities, you've got to get it hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter to burn out the impurities, and gold will come forth, and the purest of gold is clear. Pure, pure gold is clear. But by itself, it's weak. That's the reason they mix it with other metals when they make a ring. So it can be strong. I'm glad I'm hooked up with Jesus, aren't you? Because He says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now we go on down here. And after all this, Exodus 15, verse 1 and 2, they crossed the Red Sea after they were saying, Oh, you brought us out here to die. They stood still and they saw the salvation of the Lord. And in, verse, in chapter 15, verse 1, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father is God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. There's no way around it. He'll take you through it. He will protect you. What does it say in Daniel 3.27, going back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fire. Now, I already said that it's for God's glory and His honor to let people know that He is God. What is it Nebuchadnezzar said? Behold, I see four men in the fire. What does he say? And the fourth is like unto the Son of God. Well, he was a pagan. How did he know it was God? Let me tell you, when God shows up, He don't need any introduction. You will know that it is God. Amen? Um, Daniel 3.27, the Hebrew children came out of the fire. It says, The princes and the governors and the captains and the king's counselors being gathered together saw these men, listen, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. They didn't even smell of smoke, and they'd been right in the middle of that fire. Amen? I tell you what, when the world comes against you with all these fiery trials, look up because your redemption draweth nigh. You may go through this and that and think you're going to be burned alive in the fire, but guess what? God's right in there walking along beside you and not even one hair on your head is going to be singed. You're not even going to smell of smoke, but you're going to come through it and you're going to come forth like gold. Psalms 23, we quote that a lot. We quote that a lot. And I want to look at verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. How does he know God's with him? Yea, though I walk through the valley, not the valley of death, the valley of the shadow of death. Do you know without light you cannot have shadows? <laughs> what is God? He is light. 
He is light. So God is right there with you. He's walking right there through you. So you don't even have to deal with death. You're dealing with the shadow. It looks like death, but it's not death. Oh, grave, where is, oh death, where is I sting? Oh, grave, where is I victory? What did Paul say? Death has been swallowed up into victory. Amen. Because Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave when He rose again that third morning. For without Him rising again, without the shedding of blood, there is no salvation. Amen. And if He hadn't risen again, we would have no hope. Amen. But we have a hope because He lives again and He is ascending on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. But let me tell you something. Without a light, you can't have a shadow. And so, it is not the valley of death. It just looks like it. Isn't it funny what shadows look like you know, when your imagination stirs? and you're, Especially kids. It's dark and then you see a tree and it looks like some old spooky goblin trying to get at you. But when you turn the light and the light is shown on it, you see it's a tree. You know, things appear different. They don't appear as they are. But when you take the light of the Word of God and you hold it up to it, you can see things for what they really are. But let me tell you, God will protect you. Why am I talking about light in the middle of this? Well, I'll tell you why. A cloud by day and fire by night is what He used to guide the children of Israel to the Promised Land. And in chapter 14, these two verses, 19 and 20, what happened when the enemy assailed them? What happened when the enemy came upon them? Verse 19, the angel of God which went before the camp of Israel removed and went behind them and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel and it was a cloud and darkness to them but it gave light by night to these. There's a big difference in being a them and a these. Them were the Egyptians. These were the children of God. So that one came not near the other all night. The psalmist David talked about the Lord being a light unto him. In Proverbs it says, I word it by hid my heart that I might not sin against you. You go down a little bit of further and it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Well, guess what? The Bible also says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So He will protect you and there's no way around it. You, he, God will take you through it. And finally, God will defend you. He will deliver you. He will lead you. He will protect you and He will defend you. Exodus 14, verse 13 and 14. Moses said to the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Let's go down to verse 28. This is the good part. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead <laughs> upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and believed the Lord and His servant Moses. So what does this mean? He will defend you and He'll take care of the problem. He will do what He said He will do. If He makes a promise, it is yes and amen. What the Word says, let every man be a liar and God be true. He's not a man that He should lie, nor the Son of Man that He should repent. 
Isn't that wonderful to know that He'll deliver you whether you put yourself there or someone else put yourself there. He will lead, the, lead you, He will protect you, and He will defend you, and He will do what He said He would do. What was it? God let Jacob know, excuse me, Joseph know, way back in Genesis, he, he said, God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land into the land which you swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. God will do what He said He will do. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. And when you come up against something like the Red Sea and there's no way through, you don't know what you're going to do, you can't make it on your own, that's when God likes to show up and He says, just step aside and let me make a way. He specializes in making a way where there is no way. And there's no way around it. There's maybe a mountain on this side. You may be between a rock and a hard place. But when there's no way around it, God will make a way through it. There was no way around that Red Sea unless they tracked back toward Egypt. But they'd have to go back to where they'd been. God does not want you to fall back to where you've been. God wants you to keep going forward. What did He say? He told Moses to tell the children. He said, why are you asking me? Tell them to go forward. And so they did. And God made a way. He made a miraculous delivery right there in the middle of their problems, in the middle of their desert. Let's look right here. Isaiah 43, 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Serba for thee. He said, I've done it before and I'll do it again. Praise God. Uh, it says in verse 5, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. God said He's going to give you something. It's going to be yours. You can go ahead and stand on it because His Word and His promises are true. Amen. But listen to this. It doesn't say if you pass through the waters or if you walk through the fire. It says when. Amen. See, it's not a matter of if. if it's a matter of when. When are you going to have to face it? When are you going to have to go through it? It doesn't matter because God's going to be right there with you. He's going to be the fourth man in the fire and not fire's going to kindle on you. It's not going to turn the color of your coat and you're not even going to smell like smoke. But you're going to come through. The only thing the fire did for the three Hebrew children was set them free because they went in bound and they come out free because of that other man in the fire. Praise God. And... In this water, they were between a rock and a hard place and said, God, what are we going to do? And when they didn't know what to do, God made a way. There was no answer in sight. Well, God made the answer. Amen. He is the answer. And there is no way around it. God will take you through it. Amen. There was no way around that Red Sea. And God took them through it. There was no way for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to get out of that fire. But let me tell you something. It was not their choosing to be in that fire. They were put in that fire by an old wicked king. But guess what? When they came out of that fire, that king said, Your God is the God. People are watching you and what you go through. And they're saying, My goodness, they are faithful. They must have the real thing. I want some of what they got because what they've got is real. Amen. Amen. People are looking for things in this world that will not satisfy. But they look at you. Amen. Do they see Jesus? For we are to be His reflection. We are to be a light in a world of darkness. Dispelling the shadows. Dispelling the gloom. So I don't know this morning what you're facing. I don't know what trial's ahead of you. Maybe it's a bad report from the doctor. Maybe your taxes are due. Maybe you're, you've got bills to pay. Maybe all 27 of your credit cards are maxed out. <laughs> it does not 
matter. Maybe your income dried up. Dried up. Instead of getting a raise, you, you, your, in, your check went down. Doesn't matter. Say, oh Lord, how am I going to do this? It doesn't matter. Because you're not going to do this. He's going to do this. Amen? Amen. There's no way around it. We are going to have hard times and troubles and trials and tribulations. But we don't have to face them alone. Because if we listen to God, He will deliver you. He will lead the way. He will protect you. And He will defend you. He loves you. It doesn't matter when things are heating up. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's a marriage. Maybe it's a friendship. Maybe it's, it's a relationship between siblings or parents. It doesn't matter. If things are heating up, if you take God in with you, you'll come out smelling like a rose, not like smoke. Amen. I tell you what, there's no way around it. God will take you through it. And I hope you rest in that today. But there's one important thing to know. It was His children that He took through. He didn't take the Egyptians through there. He took His children. He loves His children. He's a good father. But are you His child? If you're not His child, the Bible says the way of transgressors is hard. Because you've got to go it alone. You've got no one that will defend you or protect you. No one that will lead you in the right way. No one that will deliver you. But there's a man. I know a man who can. I can't do it on my own, but I know a man who can. Amen? <laughs> and if you don't know him, you're missing out on a lot. Amen. You're missing out on a lot. So it doesn't matter. Let's close in the word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You for this day. We thank You for Your many blessings, God. But most importantly, we thank You for what You're going to do. We praise You for what You've done, and we thank You for what You're going to do. We look forward with expectation. We will stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You will fight our battles, and we will keep our peace. And we thank You, God, for being a man of war, like Your Word says. You will fight the battle for us. The victory, the battle is Yours, the victory is Mine, and victory is sweet. Lord, I've delivered what You've placed on me. Your Word says that it will go forth and not return void, but it will accomplish that and where unto You sin. it. So whatever the situation, whether it's sickness, Lord, whether it's a relationship, Lord, doesn't matter, God. I know that You will make a way. Whether it's finances, whether it's mentally, whether it's spiritually, God, You will make a way. Help us to remember that when there's no way around it, You'll take us through it. Amen. Lord, help us remember that we can't escape Your love. Amen. And there's no way around it. You're going to take us through it. And we thank You, God, for that. So, Lord, I pray that You just minister to each and every one here today. Lord, if there's someone that doesn't know You and the full pardon of their sins, may Your Holy Spirit sit by them now, Lord, yeah. and compel them, God. I pray that not just here, but it would, that Your Spirit would follow them home. Go with them throughout the week. Well, let them know how much they need You. Place people in their paths. And Lord, we know there may be people in their families under the sound of my voice that are lost and undone without God. Lord, let us be that light to be a witness to You, God. We praise Your name for that and we thank You, God. And now we're going to be looking. We're going to be able to look back like the children of Israel did. And we're going to be able to look back and say, God did it. Look at what my God did. He brought us through. When we're on the other side of our trials and tribulations, for we know if we suffer with You, we're going to reign with You, God. Thank You for this day. And bless us, God. Keep us each and every one. 
In Jesus' name.